Hello, this is Alex from MidiSequencing.com, and today we're going to look at automation. Automation is the ability to change elements in your mix over time. Volume is a super common thing that you're going to want to automate. You can also automate your panning, your sends, effects parameters, and we're going to look at how to do all that stuff. So I have this weird vocal that is good for demonstrating the principles of automation on. So here it is. Watch how the, the faders move, the panning moves, and the send moves, and you can see how this uh, EQ will move as well. So what? She said she was sorry. Over, 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 over. Okay, so when you have a track and you have a lead vocal on that track, one of the first things you do after you've set the general levels of your mix is you want to go to the lead vocal and you want to automate the volume so that the level throughout the lead vocal is more or less the same. There's no big dips in volume or anything. A compressor does this as well, but if you do the volume automation first, you're going to get clearer more natural results and the compressor won't have to work as hard. So here is the non-automated version of this vocal. So what? She said she was sorry over and over again. So the over and over is a lot quieter than the start of the track. So we go to the volume automation and we're going to want to Go to that point and turn it up. Over. Sorry. Over and over. So that matches the volume more or less. And then after you've gone through the whole vocal and you've matched the volumes, you're going to go through the whole vocal again and get all of the breaths that you don't like and turn them down or turn them off and any of the harsh S's you're going to want to turn down. You can use a de -er for this, but on your lead vocals, it's you're going to get also better results through automation than you would through a de -er. uh, For your background vocals, go ahead and use a de -er, but and just compressors. But for your lead vocal, really get in there and get the details right. So I'm going to show you how to do an S real quick. Uh, right in the beginning, we start off with an S. So you just grab it and you're going to want to turn it down and the idea is to get it to a where it sounds natural but it's not too harsh. So I also like to fade in kind of and fade out just a little tiny bit to make it sound more natural. So what? So that sounds pretty natural but it's not as harsh as so what? The original. And if I turn it down a lot you'll see it's not so what? Now that's not bad either. So what? But if you turn it down all the way, so what? You know, it's not a great sound. So after you've gone through your whole track and you've automated it, I'm not going to do this whole thing. I'm just going to copy this from up here and put it onto this vocal. Um, you're not going to be able to use your volume fader anymore once you add volume automation. If I turn it all the way down, it doesn't matter. It jumps up to wherever the automation is. So to control the overall level of your vocal after you've automated, you can add a gain plugin and turn it up or turn it down, or an EQ plugin and just use the gain to turn the whole thing up or down. Or you can send it to an aux, or you can add a VCA. There's a whole bunch of different ways to control the whole volume of your track. Also, in Logic, you have a relative volume, so you can turn the whole thing down if you want, or sections or whatever, and it'll it's relative, so it still has these dips, but everything is 1.7 dB quieter. So that's how you draw in automation. And this volume automation is super important for getting great mixes. Now, for automating other stuff, you don't have to draw everything in. Um, you can go into one of the automation modes, touch or latch. I recommend you do not use write because it'll overwrite all of your automation. Just touch or latch. 
and I'm going to show you how you do that. So when you put it in touch mode, we can take this little altar boy. This will change the pitch and at the end here and you just press play and then move the parameter. So we're going to move the pitch down over and over again. Okay, and you notice at the end it jumped back to zero semitones. That is how touch mode automation works. Latch mode will just latch on to wherever you leave the parameter at or the fader or whatever. So here's how latch mode works. Over and over again. It stays down there. A really common thing to automate is your sends, especially if you have a long delay on an aux track because you might have different instruments that you want to send to the same delay at different times. So you can just do this the same way in touch or latch mode. Move the knob as the track plays. Over and over. And that's automating the send. And we also had a filter on here that opened up as the track played. So I started out kind of with everything uh, high passed. So what? She said she was sorry. Over and over. over. And lastly, we had some crazy painting going on. So what? She said she was sorry. Over and over, over, over. And if you want to go in and redraw any of this, you're welcome to do that. You can check out everything else by pressing this down arrow or select the parameters you've automated this way. And after you've finished, put it back into read mode and you'll hear your automation. So what? She said she was sorry. Over and over. over. Cool. So thank you for watching. If you want to subscribe, do that. I'll take any likes if you want to give me them. Please come by midisequencing.com if you want to learn about mixing, production, writing great tracks, making MIDI sound real. It's all there. So have a great day. Peace.